Welcome to the Pool Guy Podcast Show. In this episode, I'm going to go over some common mistakes you make with your pool. If you're new to pool ownership, or if you're buying a house at a pool, or if you had a pool built, I'm going to go over some things that you can keep an eye out for and some of the mistakes you want to avoid. And I think you'll find these tips very helpful whether you're new or if you have a pool already and you want to get some more information about pool care. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro. And these tips are valid if you do your own pool, maintain your own pool, do it yourself, or or if you have a pool service, these will be applicable to both situations. I know a lot of people don't take care of their own pool and they have pool service. And a lot of people take care of their own pool and don't have a pool service. And so this probably will resonate with both categories. The number one mistake that I see out there, and this is one of my pet peeves, and it's really one of the things that really irritates a lot of pool professionals, is that the homeowner does not keep the proper water level in the pool. Now, there are some pools that have an autofill, which is nice to have, but a lot of pools don't have the in-deck autofill. It's up to the customer to add water. I wouldn't advise the pool service professional to be adding water to the customer's pool because invariably you're going to leave the water on, flood the backyard, possibly flood the customer's house, flood the neighbor's yard, and it would be a pretty expensive water bill by the time someone figures out what's going on. And I think this is the number one liability, a general liability call as well, or claim as well, is that the pool service company left the water on and it was water damage. And this could be in the range of 50000 100000 I've seen some damage that's over 100000 especially if the water gets into the, into the house and they have to redo all the flooring. So it's really crucial that you make sure that you're not the one filling the pool. Now, I know that there are some situations that are unavoidable. If the property is empty, there's no one there to fill it, then you're kind of left holding the bag. And there's a couple tricks that you can do. The one that I do when I have to fill the pool, and I'm reluctant to do this, but sometimes the house, again, is vacant, and I'll put my car keys on top of the fill line, and that way I can't leave without turning off the water. And I've gone to my truck before without my keys, and I'm like, hey, where are my keys? Oh, yeah, I'm filling the pool. So you can see how this could be something that could be very dangerous if you, if you leave the water on and you're doing the pool service and you leave. And it's something that the customer should do on a regular basis. Now, a lot of customers don't like filling their pool because they feel like they're wasting water. But in reality, really, if you're running your, if you're filling your pool for 10 minutes, like taking a shower, the same amount of water that you're using to fill your pool is the same amount of water that's coming out of the shower. And it's not something that's going to really waste water. The biggest waste of water, in my opinion, is over irrigating the yard. And a lot of people have their sprinkler systems on too long and you're stepping on the grass and it's really spongy because basically they have way too much water going to their their lawn and their planters. So the pool is not something that you need to worry about as far as wasting water. In fact, the opposite effect happens when you're not adding water and it gets too low. A lot of the older pools don't have any way to protect the equipment when the pool is low. And so if the water gets low enough and the pool pump is running dry, basically there's no water in the pump, it'll cause problems for the pump, could burn out the motor, and it could melt the plumbing, and you could have a repair in the hundreds and even thousands of dollars depending on what's damaged in your backyard due to your water level getting low. So I always tell people that it's much better and less expensive to add water to your pool versus replacing your equipment or repairing your equipment. And besides that, it's kind of a domino effect or chain reaction. When the water's low, the pool's not being circulated, which means that the debris will, will of course, gather, which leads to algae, which leads to the chemicals not being dispersed in the pool properly. And all this is a chain reaction where at the end of the week, when you realize that you didn't add water, you have algae to deal with, you're going to shock the pool and add chemicals. So any savings that you would have had by just adding water is eaten up by all the side effects, the algae, the pool needing to be cleaned really well, and the possible equipment damage. So I always emphasize to add water to the pool and make it a habit to add it at least once a week to your pool 
and kind of know where the middle of the skimmer is so you can add the proper amount and keep an eye on your pool during the hot days because the evaporation is a lot higher in those days. And of course, make sure you turn the water off after you turn it on. You're going to have the same problem that the Pool Pro has when we're filling a pool when we shouldn't be filling a pool is that you may invariably forget the water's running and overfill the pool. A good tip, a lot of people will put their car keys on the fill line before they run an errand or they'll be automatically kind of tuned in to set the pool to run the fill at you know Monday morning at 8 o'clock. They'll put their timer on in their kitchen. Whatever is going to work for you, you just don't want to leave the water on. And of course, the best case scenario is to have an autofill installed in your pool. An in-deck autofill is a little expensive. You probably will run you about 1600 to 1800 now to have one installed. But you have to have a fill line at your, you know, where they can tap into. Or you can just get maybe one of those on-deck fill lines like the Pool Sentry, which I think is a fairly decent autofill system that sits on the deck. Not quite as pretty, but something that is also effective. Another thing that I notice with people that do their own pools and when I take over service, one of the first things I'll do is drop in an automatic suction side cleaner. Because I think the cleaner is really something that's essential in the pool, not only does it keep the pool clean and swim ready every day of the week for you, it also prevents staining in the pool. A lot of times I will take over an account and there's organic staining on the bottom because they're not vacuuming the pool on a regular basis. And believe it or not, the dirt that blows into your pool does have metal ions in it. There's a lot of metal in the dirt. There's also organic matters like, you know, bugs die, animals die, and they're in the dirt. That gets in the pool and that could stain the pool. And I found many pools where they're not vacuuming on a weekly basis where the staining is more or less permanent at some point. I'll try some of the topical stuff that I normally use to get rid of the staining, but a lot of it's just embedded. Sometimes there's calcium forming over it. And this will be cured only by a full drain and acid wash if you have a gunite plaster type pool. And it's something that, you know, is a problem also for fiberglass and vinyl where it's more of a permanent problem. So the automatic suction side cleaner will keep the pool clean. It also vacuums the dirt on the pool and that prevents staining. And I, I think people get the misunderstanding that the automatic cleaner is only there for one purpose, which is to keep the pool clean, which it is. But the secondary purpose is to make sure that there's no stains developing on the surface of the pool because it's running in your pool all day long for 8-10 hours a day and it's cleaning the pool for you and keeping that dirt from forming or staying on the bottom of the pool forming stains. So I think the automatic cleaner is definitely a must. It also saves time on cleaning the pool. So for the pool service professionals, really nice to have these on your route because then you would just spot vacuum the pool and you have more time to do other things like brush the pool, clean the tiles, balance the water and there's really not a drawback that I see from automatic cleaner except maybe the hoses people don't like them in there and when they have a party they'll they'll be irritated a little bit by having to take it out but to me that's a mild irritation for the cleaner really helping you from having stains on the bottom of your pool so that's an important thing and the automatic cleaner also keeps your pool swim ready so you can use your pool any day during the week you know if the pool services are on a Monday or Tuesday and you're having a party over the weekend, you can be rest assured that that automatic cleaner will keep the pool clean all week long. So they're an essential part, I think, of a pool, and I wouldn't neglect having one. You know, they have pressure cleaners also. If you have a booster pump with your pool, and you can put a robotic pool cleaner in there as well. These are all great methods of cleaning the pool and keeping it clean and keeping stains from forming in the pool. I should also mention that it does pick up leaf debris as well, and the leaf debris, if left on the bottom of the pool, will, of course, eventually stain the pool because it's an organic matter but also it will use up some of the chlorine as well and so this is a great way to also make sure you're not wasting money on chemicals because you have a lot of leaf debris in the pool causing the chlorine to be used up so that's another reason why an automatic cleaner is also important here's one that i think a lot of homeowners and dog lovers are going to come against me on and that's letting your dog swim in the pool and it's okay if you want your dog to swim in the pool that's perfectly fine I'm not against it. I'm just going to give you the reasons why I don't like it and the reasons why you may not want to have your dog swim in the pool. And it's mainly because of the effect the dog has on not only the chemistry of the pool, but also the pool equipment. And I've seen a lot of pool equipment get clogged up with dog hair and have problems, have leaks, have air leaks. 
And I've seen skimmers impacted with dog hair to where there was no water flowing, causing damage to the equipment. And this, this is a real issue. There was a photo in one of the Facebook groups where the guy took the filter lid off and it was like, it looked like there was an animal living in there. There was so much golden retriever hair in there. It looked like Chewbacca was in the filter. It was just so covered with and compacted with hair. And this does happen and it does clog up the equipment and it causes problems with the chemistry of the pool, of course, because then the pool's not flowing. But also the dogs themselves have a lot of body oils. They're dirty. They don't really take baths before they jump in. They certainly don't wipe after they go to the bathroom. So all that's getting into the pool. And then if you're swimming with your dog, I mean, I really think you're taking a little bit of a health risk. I wouldn't recommend it. If your pool is just for your dogs, then I guess you're okay with that. And I've serviced many pools where the homeowner didn't use the pool, but the dogs used it. And that was perfectly fine. I, I don't, I'm not against that. But I am against you not knowing the effect the dog has on the water chemistry, the filter. Of course, if you have a cartridge filter, they're going to wear out a lot faster. And it's something to be aware of. The water quality is not going to really, really be great. And it takes a lot of effort to maintain a pool where dogs are swimming in it. So that's something that you should be aware of. And again, if you want to let your dog swim, that's fine. I just don't advise it. And I would say that if you have a pool service route and you have many customers with dog swimming, just be aware of the effect you're going to have on the water and the equipment and the filter and how often you have to clean the filter. And this is something you may want to put into your price so that you cover your extra chemicals and cover the extra time cleaning the filter. This one here is something that impacts you directly as a homeowner and that's running your pool too long. And I know a lot of people really run their pool too long based on some weird kind of rules of thumb, you know, like 12 hours of daylight, then you're going to run your pump 12 hours. If there's eight hours of daylight, you run your pump eight hours. And this is kind of like something that doesn't really fit every pool. If you had a 20,000 gallon pool, sure, 12 hours sounds right. But if the pool is 8,000 gallons and 12 hours is overkill, and then you add the extra layer of having variable speed pumps where you have different speeds. And it's, you know, I kind of liken it to driving. Uh, maybe you're going somewhere that's an hour away and 50 miles, let's say. So if you're driving at 45 miles an hour, you're going to get there a lot later. It's going to take you more time to get there than if you're driving at 70 miles an hour. And that's kind of how the pump speeds are. If you're running your pump on a lower RPM, let's say 1800 RPMs, the water turnover is going to be a lot slower. You're going to, the pool is going to be pumping less gallons per minute. Let's just say it's pumping 30 gallons per minute. But if you have your pool at 2800 RPMs, it's pumping, you know, 60 gallons per minute. So the flow is going to be higher at that point, which means you don't have to run the high speed as long as you think. And running a low speed longer because it saves your energy is a smarter way of doing it. So basically running the pool too long, I'm talking about running the pool too long at a higher speed. If you have a single speed pump, running your, your pool too long and that causes a lot of cost in your energy cost. But running a variable speed pump on a high speed for too long also has the same effect. I don't mind running a pool at 1800 RPMs for 10 or 12 hours a day and then running it at a medium speed of 2600 RPMs for like 3 or 4 hours. You're going to get really good benefits on your energy cost. And the pool is still going to look really good because your automatic cleaner is still going to run for four or five hours a day. And it's something to consider when you set your pump to make sure that you're not really wasting energy by running it on a high speed too long. And then not adjusting it in the wintertime is another problem. I know a lot of homeowners don't pay attention to this, but if you're running your pool 12 hours a day in the summer, and then as the temperature starts dropping and it gets cooler, if you're running it 12 hours in the winter, it doesn't make any sense because you don't really need to run it as long as that in most cases. So seasonally adjusting your pool runtime is also an important factor in saving money. Now, if you have a pool service, they can do this for you. They can set the pool at certain time periods or certain lengths of runtime in the spring, fall, summer, and winter for you. So that way you don't have to worry about it. And they should be adjusting it down to save you energy costs. It doesn't make any sense not to. And one of the flip sides of this, of course, is the customer that runs their pool pump too less. And this is another problem. Running it too much, of course, costs you energy use. It doesn't really affect the pool. It actually is better for the pool because it's, you have better water quality and everything looks cleaner and the chemicals are, fil are flowing in the pool and the filter is working great. But running it too less is the flip side of this problem. And I've had customers from constantly fighting them 
on their runtime. Some customers only want to run their pool two hours a day, and that's definitely not sufficient for just about any size pool if you're on a single speed pump. And I've had this battle with a customer, I've talked about him before, where it was a variable speed pump, and he just was not understanding the fact that on the low speed, I have to run the pool longer. So every time I would get there, not every time, but you know, every few weeks I would get there and I would check the speed and I would see, it was an easy touch, I can actually see the speeds in there really easily. And I could see that he kept on turning the low speed down to three hours when I had it set for 10 hours. And it was a constant battle and explaining to him that it's on low speed, so it's gonna take a lot longer for the water to, to filter and to move through the system. And you're saving a lot of energy because you're only using 230 watts of energy. Couldn't get that concept. Every time the pool turned on, he would be irritated because he felt he was wasting energy when he really was saving a lot of money on the low speed. So running it too less is also the flip side. You're gonna have poor water quality. You're gonna use a lot more chemicals because you're gonna have to shock your pool more often and you're gonna have loads of problems. It's not gonna even be safe to swim in in most cases if you're only running it two or three hours a day. So figure out the best runtime for your pool. I think there are some certain standards that you want to set, and I don't think the rules of them really work well, especially with variable speed pumps. But if you run your pool at a low speed for 10 or 12 hours a day, 15 hours a day or 16 hours a day for a larger pool, you're pretty much good at any high speed for five, four, four to six hours, and it's, it's gonna be plenty of runtime, and you're gonna maximize your energy savings for sure. And I think this problem here is something that happens whether you have pool service or whether you do it yourself, and that's not adding the proper amount of chlorine when you need to. So basically we call it shocking the pool. It kind of is an all-inclusive term that's not as accurate as you, that I think it should be. When the chlorine level drops a certain level, if you don't address it, you're going to have problems. And I think addressing low chlorine is one way to prevent a lot of problems at the pool. Sometimes people can't even use their pool all summer because at the beginning of the season, they didn't have their pool chlorine level adjusted properly, which caused algae to form. And then they didn't aggressively attack it, which caused them not to be able to use their pool because, again, this is another domino effect where if you have low chlorine, algae starts to form, you treat it, you brush the pool, the filter gets clogged up with the dead algae, you clean the filter, you don't put enough chlorine in. Again, the week later, algae forms, you clean the filter. It's like a vicious cycle that repeats itself. So the way to really take care of this is to think of it as you have low chlorine in the pool. How much chlorine should you add? A lot of people use these calculators online, and I'm not against the online calculators for dosage. I think they're great. But they make the mistake of saying, let's say, for instance, that your pool is at one part per million, and it's 15,000 gallons. And most people are like, well, I'll bring it up to three parts per million because that's the you know, the recommended level. But during that time, that pool was at one part per million. Some microalgae is forming in there. You don't see it. And by bringing it up to three parts per million, it's not enough because that algae will consume that chlorine very rapidly and it'll be back down to one part per million probably by the next day. So what you really need to do is shock the pool. And this is bringing the chlorine level up to at least 10 parts per million, maybe a little bit higher. And that way you have that residual chlorine. You know, if there's any microalgae, that chlorine will kill it. Of course, brushing the pool is always a good idea. And also, you're going to be able to reset that chlorine level at the high level. It's still safe to, safe to swim in at 10 parts per million. Don't worry about it. And you want to make sure that you do bring the chlorine level up high enough to break any kind of combined chlorine in the pool. Because a lot of people don't test for combined chlorine. And sometimes when the chlorine level is down to one part per million or even zero, there's some combined chlorine making the chlorine ineffective. And the way to break that is to raise the chlorine level up to over 10 parts per million. So what I normally do, if I get to a pool and it's at zero, I'll brush the walls, I'll run the pool a little bit longer, and then I'll bring the coin level up to about 15 to 20 parts per million. Now it sounds like a lot, but it's really only one or two gallons of liquid chlorine in the pool, if it's like 15,000 gallon. It's not like you're putting in 10 gallons of liquid chlorine. So the number sounds high when you talk about it, but in reality, 10 parts per million in the pool is not really a lot of chlorine to bring it to the shock level. So this is a common mistake I see made by homeowners as well as pool professionals by not really thinking about bringing the chlorine level up to a shock level when they need to. And I think anytime the chlorine level is below 3 parts per million, you really need to consider bringing that up to a shock level because you don't know how long it's been at that level or if it's actually an accurate number. If you're using a reagent test kit, it may be at 1 part per million. It looks like 2 parts per million. Hard to tell. 
using a photometer, it'll be pretty accurate. But anything under three parts per million, I like to shock the pool and bring it up to 10 parts per million at the least to prevent any kind of problems. And if you do this on a regular basis, I can almost guarantee you, you're never going to have an algae problem and you're never going to have a pool that's unsafe to swim in because you're being very proactive with the chemistry, especially the chlorine dropping low in the pool. So these are some common things that I see out there. There's plenty more that I could address, but these are the ones that I think that you could really focus on, correct these problems, don't make these mistakes, and you're going to have a really enjoyable summer with your pool and a longer swim season. And everything I mentioned here is pretty basic and easy to do. If you're looking for other podcasts I've recorded, you can find those on my website, swimmingprolearning.com, on the banner. Click on the podcast icon, and then there's a drop-down menu with close to 1,500 podcasts for you there. And if you're interested in the coaching program that I offer, you can learn more at poolguidecoaching.com. Thanks for listening to this podcast. Have a great rest of your week. God bless. Real quick, if you're not using pool service software, try Skimmer free for 30 days at getskimmer backslash poolguy. Again, that's get skimmer backslash pool guy. Skimmer, everything you need to run your pool service business all in one app. Pool Service Pro, open a Leslie's Wholesale account today and receive wholesale pricing on products you use every day. Leslie's Pool Supply offers convenient locations that are open seven days a week. Another great benefit of opening a Leslie's Wholesale account is Leslie's referral program. Get referred to a customer looking for weekly pool service. Save time and money and grow your pool service route and become a Leslie's Pro.